All right, we got a day off tomorrow and not much on the other side, so stocks probably able to hold on where they are at records. Today we had a flat day, but there's a few things that still look like yellow flags to me, so I'm keeping the risk radar as is, which is kind of risky because I'm off for the rest of the week, but make sure you follow me on Twitter. Risk radar updates happen there too. So I got the yellow light on stocks, got the green light on bonds. You did see the big rally back in bonds today, and you did have an auction that went pretty well, so I feel pretty good about the bond light still there reflecting the trend in lower yields. Now, obviously, if we keep getting days like we're getting in NVIDIA and the semiconductors, markets are going to keep grinding up. I'll have to flip that light back green for stocks. But a few things that still have changed here in the last couple of weeks. Number one is that the tech rally that's happening is very different than at the beginning of the year. It is valuation run up now. It used to be earnings based. That is not the case. More we pivot into the expectations of refresh cycles and consumers going out to buy new devices and stuff. That becomes way more speculative. Also, though, just economically, we're not in a great spot right now. One of the interesting moves today was that Lennar fell off and the home builders now are at an interesting spot on the chart that uh, could be indicating further breakdown. It hasn't happened yet. KB Home offering a nice counterpoint to the Lennar in the aftermarket. But the chart of ITB, the home builder complex, looks a lot like what we see in industrials and the regional banks too, which is basically hanging on to local lows from last month. So really... Any disappointment, and then you get an unwind and potentially a chart break. And this is a really important group. Honestly, I think housing is the second most important trade of the last three years behind tech. It's been tech as the main pillar. Housing is another one that's been really important. So any fragmentation in this chart is not good, and it still does look pretty weak. The other thing, too, is that the tens to the twos curve continues to stay on the low end. This is very important because there's still a lot of discussion about how, all oh, the Fed's so eager to cut. The Fed's eager to cut. But it's really not. And the economic data keep missing expectations. So what's happening is that the yield curve is getting crunched again. The tens to two saw a little bit of widening here over the last week, but then generally you're still down near the lows. So this is, uh, in fact, that's the two-year flipped over. Bottom line is the spread's contracted, and that's not what you want. Look at the economic surprise index, too. As we continue to miss data, it's not great. We're still down in the basement of the economic surprise rate. So we are missing. We are disappointing. That's why the yield curve's gotten scrunched, why it's trading near the lows, and why everything cyclically and economically sensitive is down near local lows. It's not a good look. We are getting unprecedented levels of market concentration that we haven't seen ever by some definitions and in decades by others. So can it hold? Can it power the indexes? It can until NVIDIA breaks, and that's not a really a game you want to play. But if you have some respect for the economic veracity of what's happening, the truth is that it's not a good combination of inflation plus growth and a Fed that can't quite cut yet. So these are not red flags, but to me, they're still yellow flags. I will see you next week. I'll be online, too. So I'll be watching the market. Have a great holiday. Happy Juneteenth. And uh, we'll see you next week.